Hi, Todd here from Urban Sound Studio. In the second video on the Sequential Profit, we're going to cover modulation. That includes the mod wheel, the LFO, aftertouch, velocity, and of course, the polymod section. To start, let's see how the LFO, the noise, and the mod wheel can work together to globally modulate different parts of the synthesizer. Here's our basic sound. Let's talk modulation and start with the wheel mod section, which determines what our wheel modulates. We will begin by using noise as our modulation source, and we will set it to modulate the frequency of oscillators A and B. Here it is modulating pulse width. It basically makes the pulse width knob go crazy. And now, let's modulate the filter cutoff frequency. As the cutoff is set lower, that noisy sound is heard even more. Typically, we don't use noise in extremes like this, and we might even combine it with LFO modulation. So let's see what the LFO can do. The LFO is global and will affect the entire instrument at once. The triangle waveform is bipolar, which means that it modulates up and down from its starting point. Here it is on our oscillator's frequencies, which ends up creating a vibrato. The LFO frequency will determine the speed. And the wheel determines the depth of that vibrato. If we want there to always be a certain amount of vibrato present, we can use the initial amount knob. This is useful on certain sounds like an organ. will increase the modulation amount from that offset starting point. So triangle modulating frequency sounds to us like vibrato. Let's add it to pulse width. It is still bipolar and will go up and down from where your pulse width knob is set on your oscillator. We can also modulate the filter. Once again, this modulates it up and down from where your cutoff frequency is set. So how does this compare to a square wave as your LFO? The thing with the square is that it's not bipolar it'll only modulate upward in positive values. A square wave creates a trill, and this can be super cool in something such as creating repetitive bass lines in octaves. Let's try it on pulse width. We start to hear the note disappear at a point. This is because the pulse 
with thins out so much that we start to lose the note. We can actually set our pulse width all the way counterclockwise so there is no start, and then the LFO modulates the width to make the note appear. The same thing applies when modulating our filter. If we start with the filter totally closed, we get no sound, and then the LFO will modulate the cutoff to appear in a rhythmic pattern. Let's listen to what LFO, set to saw, will do for our oscillator's frequencies. That, on its own, isn't so useful. But sync oscillator A, and now the sawtooth will modulate the frequency, which sounds more like a change in timbre. We will explore this more when we get to the polymod section. Now let's try sawtooth modulating pulse width. If we bring up the pulse with knob too much, the note will disappear. And last, let's set the cutoff of our filter really low and then modulate it with the sawtooth LFO. Profit Rev 4 allows you to use velocity and aftertouch to modulate various parameters on the Profit. If we turn up our filter envelope amount, the velocity you're playing can modulate the cutoff frequency. And we can also modulate our amp for even more volume as we play harder. or set it to do both. Aftertouch allows us to open up the filter by pressing harder after the note is performed. We can also set the aftertouch to modulate the LFO for an even deeper modulation. It's similar to using the mod wheel. Let's dive into the polymod section, which is unique to the Prophet and one of the most defining parts of its sound design. If we want to modulate the frequency of oscillator A, we can use the filter envelope to do it. Playing a chord produces a higher pitch. Setting the sustain at zero will put the pitch back to where you would expect it. Setting some attack and decay will make the pitch rise and come back down to the level of the sustain. It's a cool effect, but it's not too useful. 
Where we really start to get a great sound is using sync. Now we are modulating the frequency for timbre variations, but the note that is produced is determined by oscillator B. Listen to what this sounds like layered against oscillator B. We can also modulate our pulse width via the filter envelope. What is super important is that pulse width always modulates in the opposite direction when using polymod. So instead of going up, our knob will appear to be moving backward. So if we start at a low value, we get nothing since it brings our pulse down to zero. So start at a higher value when modulating pulse width via polymod. Experimenting with the envelope can completely change the sound. Of course, we can also modulate our filter, but this is essentially the same thing as using the filter envelope amount knob. Now, let's see how to use oscillator B as a source. We will use it to modulate the frequency of oscillator A. Let's enable low frequency and disable keyboard. Low frequency turns the frequency of oscillator B into an LFO. So if we play a chord, we can hear all these different pitch variations occur. We get variations in timing due to the phase differences. This is because polymod modulates on a per voice level rather than the entire instrument globally. Here it is with a triangle shape modulating pitch. And here's a pulse modulating the frequency creating random trills all over. If we turn on keyboard tracking, we will now have significant differences in frequency between the lower and higher notes. But once again, this is more of an effect. Let's see what this does for pulse width. Once again, remember that in polymod, pulse width modulates in reverse. With keyboard tracking off, we get a little more predictable of an effect. With a triangle waveform, it's easier to play in a more traditional manner. And with sawtooth, you start to get some unique variations. Up last, we can use polymod to modulate our filter. Pulse gives us a rhythmic and useful sound. With tracking on, we can really hear the variations.
triangle gives a nice pulsing sound. With keyboard tracking on, you start getting a cool effect that's almost like birds chirping. Last, the sawtooth wave will modulate our filter in a predictable manner that can let you create evolving sounds as you hold on to longer notes. Thanks for watching. We've now covered all the sections of the Prophet, and in the next video, we're going to cover some classic sound design tips as well as some tricks that you could do with the Prophet. In the meantime, please help support the channel by liking this video and subscribing.